Hey, today I just wanted to show you a project that I've been working on the last few weeks. Uh, it's Huffman encoding implemented in the Zig pro programming language. Um, yeah, it implements the Huffman encoding algorithm uh, and it handles it all in binary, which is super cool. And it's done from scratch in unknown level programming language, something that I'm really unfamiliar with or was, and now I'm very familiar with. So on the left, we have a text file that says, hello world. On the right, we have terminal. Now, if I take the binary, which is main, I encode test.txt into output.binary. Okay. And just let's just have a look at the binary. Oh, it's all there. And if we do decode into output.txt, and we cat output.txt, there it is. Let's take a look at the file sizes. So test.txt is 13 uh, bytes. Yeah, 13 bytes, whereas output.txt uh, is also 13 bytes, so that makes sense. But the output binary is actually a fair bit bigger, 37. And this is because for very small file size, it doesn't make sense for encoding because Huffman encoding needs to store the tree that it used to encode as well, in the file as well, right? Because otherwise it wouldn't be able to decode. It also needs to store some meta information such as the size of the tree and uh, obviously the bit masks that go along with that. But, uh, but okay, let's have a look at some Lauren Ibsen. Just one paragraph for now. Let's paste that in. And let's do the same thing. Let's encode. Let's just check the sizes. So we have test.txt here at 446. And we have output.bin at 307. So slightly smaller. 25% um, reduction. Um, or slightly more. 25% reduction. That's pretty good. Let's decode and let's cat the output. There you go, perfect. Same as um, same as the input. That's exactly what we expect. Let's just uh, get a get a couple more paragraphs of this. Uh, let's use some. Let's do some more pasting. So how many lines do we have? Nearly a thousand. Let's do a little bit more. All right, that should be good. What's the size? Okay, we have nearly we have half a megabyte. Let's encode that. There we go, that's finished. That was that's pretty quick for what it does have to do. Let's have a look at the binary size. Output.binary is 354 kilobytes. So slightly less than 50% reduction. Let's decode. That was pretty fast. Let's take a look at output.txt, 488 kilobytes, 488 kilobytes. Let's just cat, and not much to look at yet. It's Lauren Ipsum. Very cool. So, that demonstrates Huffman encoding and how it works. I just want to show you one last example. It's not a very good one, but I want to show you an example of repeated characters, which is where Huffman encoding does its best work. So the way Huffman encoding works is it creates a binary tree uh, that you can traverse to get to the um, to the characters that you want. So if you only have one character, then you can turn an entire ASCII byte into just one bit of data and then encode it into a bit mask that you later read. If we have two characters, it will have to have two nodes, but still one bit for each, which is super good. So let's uh, let's create some let's create some of these. Okay, let's do some yanking. Okay, there we go. Let's uh, let's do some more. So let's go to the top of the file, yank yank the whole thing. There we are. So let's see how big that got. So test.txt 79 kilobyte. Oh, let's make it let's make it a little bit bigger should be uh, test.txt, I didn't save maybe, there you go, I didn't save, 215 bytes, okay, let's encode, still pretty fast, let's have a look at the binary size, so output.bin, 38 kilobytes, so that is a huge reduction, right, that's, that's 20%, that's less than 20% of the original file size, which is super cool, um, and now let's decode. Let's check the file sizes, test.txt, 215, 215 on the output as well. Okay, so this is where Huffman encoding would really excel, compressing uh, strings that are super similar with limited number of characters. The more characters you have, the less effective the compression gets, but still it gets really good around 50% on most strings, uh, depending on some edge cases, 20%, but still really good and super performant because of Zig. 
Um, if you want to have a look at some of the code, um, most of the magic happens in encoding.zig. I'm going to close this right side. And if you're familiar with, if you're not familiar with Huffman encoding, what you have to do is take a frequency map of the string of characters, which is what I'm doing. And as you notice, zig is a, it does not have a garbage collector. So you manage your own memory using allocators they provide, which are really nice. Um, the, the, it just, it just makes sense, right? Instead of tracking individual bytes, you use them, you, you allocate them using an allocator and then you deunit the allocator. Super cool. I really like this pattern that they use with the dot in it, where you create a, a struct, so a data structure of some sort, and then you have to actually initialize it using an allocator um, instead of uh, giving it some maybe some some source of data. Instead of giving it an array to use or something, you give it the actual allocator and it does the allocating, but you still control the allocator, which is really nice. So there's no hidden allocations anywhere. Um, really cool. Okay, after we get the frequency map of the characters, we need to put them in a tree. We need to, first of all, create the tree nodes for, e for, for each of them with a probability of happening, right? So uh, you want the, the letters that have the highest probability of happening to have the lowest bit. So if you if the space, you know, it's used very often, you want it to have a, like to just be a zero, like a singular bit because you're going to use it very often. Um, maybe zeros are, are bad because you might need that size of the tree. And then you put it all into a heap, a heap which I also implemented. The standard library does have a priority queue, but you know, the point was to learn zig as well, so I did this. Using some of the, the comp time primitives, these are super cool. They're such an incredible idea, and it's so simple, right? Just learn, run arbitrary code at compile time. And you get all the benefits of generics, and maybe even more powerful than generic than, than generics in most languages. Um, yeah, really cool, and actually quite simple to understand. As a compiler helped me basically through all of it. I would make mistakes in syntax; it would tell me what's wrong. I would fix, and it would most sort itself out. Built-in functions like at this as well, super helpful. Um, and then you kind of go through the heap. Uh, you create some some children, an internal node. And then you, we obviously need to put the stuff in a bit mask, which is which is where I struggle the most because again, I, uh, I'm really not familiar with with binary uh, or straight binary as much as this project used so many so many bit shifts. Um, cool. I won't bore you anymore. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.